The tower that was built for the 1889 World Expo became a symbol of contradictions in architectural trends, a symbol of industrialization, a symbol of human aspirations and of course a modern symbol of Paris, retaining the name of its creator. 324 meters of iron, adventure, controversial beauty and romance. Welcome to the Eiffel Tower. The history of the Eiffel Tower finds its beginning with the glorious and relatively new at that time tradition of world expos, invented to demonstrate the industrial achievements of different countries. Naturally, such exhibitions immediately became a real arena, where each country tried to show that it was the most powerful and advanced, and this was not just about technology, but also politics and national pride. The French worked harder than anyone. By the end of the 19th century, Paris already hosted the exhibition three times and was scheduled for the fourth time in 1889. A special date, the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. The idea of building something high and magnificent arose quite quickly. In those days, a trend began to appear on the construction of high buildings, and there was a lot of noise around the recently completed 169 meter or 555 feet high Washington Memorial Obelisk. In addition, the idea of building a record tower about 300 meters or almost 1000 feet high was being widely discussed already. Despite the fact that initially, in the design of towers from various architects, stone was preferred, it quickly became clear that such a tall structure could not be built from stone, while a metal structure could give similar strength, being much lighter. One of the projects of such metal tower was developed by employees of the engineering company of Gustav Eiffel, at that time already a famous industrialist specializing in metal structures. Buildings, bridges, train stations and yes, he also built the Statue of Liberty but the apogee of his work eventually became the tower. Initially, it was supposed to be a 300 meter pylon with four slightly curved girders, connecting at the top and held together by five horizontal platforms. Yes, it's not very similar to the tower we see now. The project was remastered, many times, and as a result, the girders became much more curved, the number of platforms was reduced to three, and at the top, the tower merged into a single spire. In 1885, the project officially participated in the competition for the construction of a record tower on the Champ de Mars in Paris, off the coast of the Seine. It was one of 107 projects. The construction conditions were quite tough. There was plenty of space for the building, but there was little time, less than three years. Eiffel's plan was very ambitious. It was assumed that most of the construction would in fact be an assembly of forced iron elements, prefabricated at the factory with rivets already prepared, which would allow both reducing the number of personnel at the construction site and shortening the work time itself to only 12 months. For this, the whole team of engineers prepared a huge array of drawings. The tower had 18,038 parts and each had its own detailed plan. The work on the massive stone foundation began in 1887 and the tower began to form rather quickly. At first, the installation was being carried out using cranes, but at the heights of more than 30 meters they became inefficient and the builders were working on specially prepared scaffolding. But still, the construction was very complicated, got delayed and exceeded planned costs and the workers even went on strike. 9 to 12 hours on the tower at this height and wind were too much. As a result, the construction period was almost doubled compared to the original plan. Nevertheless, I have to give credit to Eiffel. The work, despite its complexity, passed without serious incidents and casualties. Ironically, one man died, French style. One of the engineers, in his free time, decided to show off some skill in front of his bride and fell down. So, let's climb the tower. Despite the use of lightest possible architecture of its time, the Eiffel Tower is a very heavy structure. Its weight is distributed over four shoes, from which the construction was started, with some nuance. Each leg stands on four concrete blocks. Moreover, the two legs located closer to the river, due to lower stability of the soil, had to be made more complex, with massive piles diving 22 meters or 72 feet into the ground. The entire tower is supported by four giant pillars, made of the most complex weave of metal structures, similar to spider webs. The main task of the builders was to raise the huge structure while limiting its mass. And indeed, the 300 meter tower has a total weight of about 10,000 tons. For example, the famous Titanic weighed almost five times more. 
The color of all this is also unusual. To avoid corrosion, the metal had to be hidden under protective paint, but its color changed many times. In the end, the tower received its signature Eiffel Tower brown color, an official name by the way. Every seven years the coating is renewed, taking about 57 tons of paint. The lower level rises above the pillars, forming a kind of pyramid cut off on top by the first platform of the tower. The platform, which is 57 meters or 187 feet above the ground, is the largest. Its dimensions made it possible to place quite a few objects there. Restaurants, shops, a museum, viewing platforms, areas with transparent floor and so on. Of course, the first level would not have been itself without huge and richly decorated arches resembling lace. Among the ornaments of the platform itself, the brightest are the rows of gilded inscriptions on each side, the names of 72 great French scientists of the 18th-19th centuries. But four pillars continue to rise further, forming the second level ending at an altitude of 115 meters, 377 feet. The second platform is several times smaller than the first, but it has two levels, so there is still plenty of space and the view from here is much more interesting. Naturally, to ensure safety, everything is fenced. According to various estimates, 366 people died on the tower. However, not because of danger of the structure, but rather the danger of people. All the deaths were the result of suicides or extreme climbing, so don't try to jump from the tower with a parachute and everything will be fine. In the end, the four pillars, continuing their way up, are connected, forming a colossal single tower, adding another 190 meters in height. At its top is the third, upper platform, already quite small, but probably filled with the most details and instruments. The observation deck gives magnificent views of the entire city from the height of 279 meters, 915 feet. But the tower does not end there. Most of the meteorological and communications equipment is also here, and the antenna is the peak of the Eiffel Tower, at around 324 meters, or 1,063 feet. And of course, there are spotlights here, like in a lighthouse, that give the tower its famous night views. You can climb the first two floors of the tower by stairs, if the height and 1792 stairs do not scare you. Tickets, by the way, are cheaper. However, from the very beginning it was clear that stairs alone would not be enough. There would hardly be a lot of people willing to climb 300 meters on foot. The task of development, installation and safe operation of elevators was one of the first and the most difficult for builders of the late 19th century. Eiffel, at the demand of the Paris authorities, even had to make many adjustments to the design and change suppliers. But the task was completed, and you can go to any level by an elevator, and to the very top only by an elevator. At first, elevators in the tower were driven by powerful hydraulic pumps, but now they work on electric drives. Meanwhile, the lifts themselves are the original Fives Lil elevators, working here since the very beginning. Interestingly, despite all the fears, the Eiffel Tower is almost not prone to swaying due to wind. Even in storm conditions, it tips waist by only 10 to 12 centimeters, or nearly 4 inches maximum. As practice has shown, a stronger swaying can be caused by thermal expansion. Under the influence of sunlight, the metal heats up and expands. As a result, the sunlit side of the tower is higher than the shaded one, which leads to the top side shifting 18 centimeters or 7 inches. I have to note that not all Parisians were glad to see this metal monster being built in the city center. Ever since the initial stages of the project, dozens of representatives of the art society actively opposed it, believing that a 300 meter gloomy dominant would disfigure the views of the city. The hot debate regarding the architectural value of the tower and its impact on the environment did not subside during the entire period of construction and after it. In general, even now this topic has not been forgotten. But the position of defenders of the 300 meter tower, as it was called then, was strengthened in May of 1889, when the World Expo opened in Paris. Visitors were very impressed by the new structure, which was almost twice as high as any other human-made object in the world. However, after the exhibition, the flow of visitors decreased sharply, and this problem remained unsolved for a very long time. There were even ideas to demolish the tower. Therefore, it was decided to find additional work for the structure. 
The height of the tower and the possibility of placing equipment allowed to conduct many scientific experiments. And after some time, it became a relay for radio stations and telegraph, which turned out to be very useful during the First World War. And in the 1920s, French television began. In fact, right there on the top. During World War II, in Paris occupied by Wehrmacht, the tower was used in a very limited fashion, to provide communications with the forces in the region. The dangerous moment was 1944, when Hitler gave the order to destroy the tower during the retreat of the German troops, but the military did not carry it out. In the end, the Eiffel Tower took up the main role it has today, a tourist attraction. Active growth of tourism began in the 1960s, and the number of visitors were growing rapidly, reaching 6 million a year by the end of the century. At the moment, the number of visitors has exceeded 300 million, and the original functions did not disappear. It is still being used as a TV tower. At the time of its opening in 1889, the Eiffel Tower was the tallest building in the world, far superior to its competitors. The previous record holders, Rouen and Cologne cathedrals, as well as the Washington Monument, were almost half as tall. This record lasted for several decades, until it was broken by Chrysler Building in New York, built in 1930. The Eiffel Tower still rises above Paris during the day and sparkles at night, becoming one of the symbols of the city and the whole of France. Gustave Eiffel definitely achieved his goal. And that's all for today. Subscribe to the channel not to miss future stories. There's a lot of interesting things on the horizon.